Thank you very much, Sven. Um, so we are supposed, uh, Per solberg sörensen and myself, to have a fierce discussion about the meaningfulness of uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation MS. And I will uh, take the pro part and uh, not go into any details. You have heard already from Gavin and later on uh, what the problem in MS is genetically, environmentally. Uh, at the core are T lymphocytes, uh, B lymphocytes, and also some other cells uh, that uh, drive the disease, at least at the beginning, and probably also contribute later throughout the course, uh, as will become evident later. In terms of treatment needs, I also am not going to go into detail. You've heard this from Andreas Lutherotti. Uh, we still could improve on highly uh, effective immunomodulatory treatments, even though MS was a very successful story and indication so far. Um, and I think we can begin to talk about completely stopping or even curing the disease. And this may still um, uh, sound like a preposterous idea, but I think uh, the time is ripe um, to think about it. So what are the goals of photologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation? One wants to stop the autoimmune inflammation completely, and no relapses, no disability, no further treatments. This is a one-time treatment, keep this in mind. And then the putative mechanism of action that was postulated and already known quite well in the hematological field um, is that one wants to abrogate an aberrant uh, or sick immune system and put into place a completely new one. How is this treatment done? Patients are selected. This is not trivial, uh, who the right uh, person for this might be. Then in MS patients, hematopoietic stem cells are mobilized with a combination of GCSF and cyclophosphamide. Then the patient uh, um, receives a leukapheresis, and these um, hematopoietic stem cells are harvested from the peripheral blood. As the next step, the patient receives a so-called conditioning regimen, which is composed of four cytotoxic drugs. One of them is also CNS permeable, and later on in, uh, receives in vivo ATG, an antibody similar to alemtuzumab that depletes T cells completely or as completely as possible. And then the patient receives his or her own stem cells back and is followed up afterwards. So there's a selection step, mobilization and harvesting step, conditioning, stem cell reinfusion, uh, immune system uh, um, regeneration, and, and follow up of the patients. This treatment, uh, as you've just already heard from Sven, uh, um, has been tried for quite some time. I will come to the history uh, just on one slide a moment later. In the European Blood and Mar Marrow Transplantation Group, there are over 1,000 patients now uh, registered who received uh, HSDT and MS. This is by far the largest autoimmune indication, and it's important to note that in systemic sclerosis, it is already approved as a treatment, and that's the only treatment. Very different from us, we have many treatments for MS patients. It's sometimes good to look back a little bit. So this treatment is not as old as the Swank diet, and it's also not as old as aspirin, uh, but this person here started the first allogeneic stem cell transplantation in 1957. He received the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1990, and as uh, was already alluded to, Athanasios Fassas in Greece began with this treatment in the mid-90s in Thessaloniki, um, uh, in small cohorts of MS patients. Now the estimated number in North America and Europe is well over 4,000, that's an estimate. But to show you that this is a standard treatment, there, only in Europe there are more than 30,000 uh, stem cell, autologous stem cell transplantations every year. So worldwide, more than 100,000 per year. This is from the FASAS paper, 1997. It's a small group of patients. And you can see that on average, these patients that were quite disabled, they were progressive patients, improved with the EDSS and also with the Scripps Neurological Rating Scale. This goes from um, uh, uh, dead to completely healthy, and this goes the other way around. As you know, 10 is uh, EDSS of 10 would be dead from a mess, and zero would be completely healthy. So he noted in his uh, paper, durable neurological improvement have been detected with both the EDSS and the SR SNRS scale. You see here on a slide from Ricardo Zaccardi compiled by the EBMT the numbers of uh, stem cell transplants in, uh, in Europe registered. Uh, so the number goes up, uh, even though those numbers are clearly not high from reasons that we will later discuss. And in terms of uh, distribution, now more relapse remitting disease patients with aggressive disease are transplanted and less progressive. At the beginning, it was only given to progressive patients. Just a few words on clinical efficacy. 
What we measure, you heard already from Ludwig Kappos, uh, we measure relapse rate, dis disability progression, MRI lesions, and or atrophy, then it would be called NEDA 3 or 4. And what has not been systematically captured yet with the treatments is improvement. And you will see this treatment primarily uh, also sh is important because it improves the disease. This is a, a small study, 25 patients, North American, uh, very well done study, the HALT MS trial. You can see patients on average improve. And over five years, 60% of the patients are completely disease-free, would fulfill NEDA2 criteria. This is another trial by Richard Bird, slightly different uh, regimen to condition. You can see here that the uh, disease activity-free survival is 70% after five years. Again, most of the patients improving afterwards. This is a patient that we had seen and treated at NIH. You can see um, here a lot of MRI activity before treatment, then the patient afterwards improving in the EDSS, now being disease-free for a very long period of time and no new MRI lesions. This is actually the ideal patient. Aggressive disease before, moderate uh, disability scale, below 50 years of age. Um, and here you see, saw this slide also already. Um, clearly, uh, treatments improved a lot, but when you compare the small trials, I have to say, uh, with a note of caution, the NADA3 that can be reached after two years with the stem cell transplantation is substantially higher than even with the most active drugs that we currently use in this uh, compilation here, cladribine and uh, ocrelizumab. This is also from Maria Piazomani. She compiled the stem cell trials, and uh, here the uh, NADA3 rate after five years, not after uh, two years, is 67%. And, and these trials are, of course, more heterogeneous, and the drug company conducted large phase three trials, and usually the patients were sicker here than in the uh, company-sponsored trials and had more prior treatments, all important to, to keep in mind. What about safety? I think there are some misconceptions uh, still around. This is, again, the data from the EBMT, and you can see since 2011, there was one treatment-related mortality, one case of death due to uh, stem cell transplantation from an infection, <laughs> in the first 100 days after the procedure was performed. And that's really the only period where this um, treatment is risky. So the mortality is somewhere below 0.5%. Uh, this is data from older trials up until 2006. So the data is already quite old. But nevertheless, I, I want to mention viral and bacterial infections are an issue. Hematologists know very well how to deal with this now. There have been, maybe I shouldn't call them secondary malignancies, there have been malignancies after um, stem cell transplantation, like with the other drugs as well. Um, old, uh, old trial population, very sick uh, patients, and um, also secondary autoimmune phenomena, similar but much lower than with alemtuzumab, for example. Let's compare stem cell transplantation with one drug that certainly is perceived as well-tolerated and something that's good for MS patients. And I have taken Talsabri or Natalizumab as an example. This drug is very well-tolerated. It's perceived as highly effective. You saw the data before. But there are 750 cases of PML as of October 2017 and approximately 190 deaths from PML and many patients with severe remaining PML-derived disability. I want you to keep this in mind when we discuss the risks of HSCT and the cost associated with the treatment, drug itself, monthly infusions, control exams. So in Switzerland, where hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is very expensive, after five years or earlier, one would break even with respect to cost. In uh, Germany, it would be much earlier. It would be between two and three years already that the... Uh, um, treatment cost of the stem cell transplantation are already lower. Which patients? Just a few words on that as well. The ideal patient would be active, aggressive, relapse-remitting multiple sclerosis with more than uh, one relapse in the year prior to treatment, several new T2 or contrast-enhancing lesions, failed at least one highly active therapy below 50 years and within 10 years after um, diagnosing MS. There is some room to that, as the newer trial have shown. Uh, I will show you one slide from that. And clear disease activity also in the progressive patients, which should be assessed as well and included uh, as uh, patients with the option for HSCT. This is a study that Paolo Moraro just published. He was uh, two times a postdoc with me and uh, has followed uh, very systematically in this area. And you can see in this trial that summarized data from patients transplanted in 1995 to 2006 with a mean EDSS of 6.5, so almost wheelchair-bound, 
and 78% progressive patients, the relapsing patients improved on average, and even the progressive patients were stable or on average very slightly though. Um, uh, improved, but these are over 100 patients, so it's certainly something that one should take into consideration. With respect to mechanism of action, I'm not going to go into uh, detail about that. What has been shown that the immune system is indeed destroyed, and then new CD4 and CD8 8 cells are generated. Uh, the thymus begins to function again, which is amazing in an adult individual. We have increased numbers of T regulatory cells and gene expression profiling. And changes uh, to a normal signature, and uh, after the first year, also brain atrophy normalizes. So let me conclude. This is a highly effective therapy. Um, it, it renews the immune system. It should be, I think, a treatment option for relapsing emitting patients, and also in, in progressive patients, it should be considered. It is safe now. Uh, hematologists use it as a standard treatment now for a long time, and pediatricians as well. Mobilization and conditioning is done by these uh, drug combinations that I mentioned already. A phase three trial is in planning an international one by the NIH and ITN. No drug company is interested in this procedure. It's not a treatment, it's rather a procedure. But the NIH uh, is currently organizing such a trial. It's already available and approved in Sweden and possible in some other countries if experts uh, recommend it, but not yet in Switzerland. <coughs> so I think the place should be somewhere here. Definitely these uh, treatments should be tried before, and then uh, with a tight um, follow-up, I think this should be an option for patients with aggressive disease. Let me briefly summarize also the situation in Zurich. Um, two patients were recently transplanted. Two patients, uh, and maybe a third one, will pay for the procedure themselves. This costs 160,000 Swiss francs. In Florence, it would be 45,000 euros. We have seen 65 patients after um, a TV program um, by PULS last year. Since April, 31 of them were eligible with the criteria that I showed you. <coughs> we, we have applied with the Bundesgesundheitsamt. This is a tedious process, but we are uh, still answering questions. And we hope that in June uh, this year we will get approval and uh, probably have to conduct the registry study. We have an interdisciplinary board with the hematologist, which is very important, including neuropsychology, physiotherapy, and so forth. And um, as I said already, we will have to conduct the registry study. The effort is ongoing. Um, it is not easy to convince people. Uh, I hope I have at least shown you that this should be a meaningful treatment option for multiple sclerosis patients. And with that, I would like to just show you who in Europe is um, heavily in involved in this. There are many groups in, in different countries in Europe in Zurich, it's particularly Urs Schanz and uh, Antonia Müller in the hematology group, and then a number of members from our group and also uh, other clinicians, research nurses uh, um, that are involved in, in this treatment. And with that, I would like to thank you. Thank you.